Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In this class, we discuss everything social science research from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, the elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our class today. In our previous lesson, we have explained the last three sections of chapter one of the research proposal. We have discussed section 1.10, which is assumptions of the study, 1.11, definition of significant terms, and 1.12, which is organization of the study. This lesson has brought to an end our discussion of the sections of chapter 1 of the research proposal. Remember we started from background of the study which was section 1.1 and we have completed with section 1.12 which is organization of the study. In our lesson today we are going to introduce literature review. Now literature review is the chapter 2 of the research proposal. In this lesson, we shall explain the meaning of literature review, the purpose of literature review, and the scope of literature review. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of literature review, state the purpose of literature review, and identify the factors to consider when determining the scope of literature review. Before we look at the meaning, as we did in chapter 1, which are the sections of chapter 2 of the research proposal? I'm sure you may be wondering why we have not listed a number of sections like we did in chapter 1 where we had 12 subsections. This is because the way the researcher organizes their literature review may differ from one person to the other, one discipline to the other, and one institution and the other. So we may not give distinct subsections of literature review. What is clear is that Literature review should have section 2.1, which is an introduction. And when we say introduction, the section introduces the chapter to the reader. This is where you tell your audience or your reader what to expect in that chapter. Then from section 2.2 to the last section, you are reviewing related literature to your subject matter, both empirical and conceptual studies. You are also discussing theoretical framework. You are discussing conceptual framework and summarizing the literature review or identifying the gaps. So these sections from 2.2 to the last may not be as distinct as we have in chapter 1. So you may have one proposal having 10 subsections in chapter 2, another one with 15, another one with 8, all of that based on the context and the discipline. But what is clear is that the section should have review of related literature, theoretical conceptual framework and gaps that are identified. It's also important to state that there are some institutions who will have their theoretical and conceptual framework in chapter one. So it only depends on how your institution 
gives or guidelines on the structure of the proposal. But for our lesson, we are going to discuss theoretical and conceptual framework as part of chapter two, because majority of the institutions have their uh, theoretical and conceptual framework in chapter two, which is named literature review. So what is literature review? In my course of teaching, I hear many students uh, saying that the simplest uh, chapter to write in the research proposal is literature review. Why? Because you only read and duplicate what the other people have written. Far from it. If there is a section or a chapter that you should give a lot of attention is literature review because without proper literature review, you will not be able to discuss your findings in chapter four. Neither will you be able to come up with credible conclusions and recommendations for further research. And we'll be discussing that in the coming lessons. So when we talk about literature review, literature review refers to the identification and summarizing the studies about a topic. It is a search of the available literature in your identified research study or subject matter of the research. Literature review also refers to the systematic identification, location, and evaluation of the materials containing information related to the subject matter of the research. Now, note that literature review is systematic. And the other thing that you need to note is that you identify, locate, and evaluate materials that are related to the subject matter. In other words, to the problem that you are investigating. And this literature review means that it is relevant material to the subject matter. It thus should be very extensive because you want to build the body of knowledge in your subject matter. That is why literature review does not mean copy and paste. You are building the body of knowledge by contrasting and looking for comparison between your problem and what others have written. So before considering what literature to review and use, first be clear on the subject or the subject matter of the study. Be very clear of your research problem. It therefore means that literature review, after you have identified your problem, then literature review should start so that you can clarify the need for research by providing the background to the research. You are able to build upon the knowledge that already exists and enable your reader to judge the suitability of the research approaches that you are going to select for the problem you are investigating. So let us look at the purpose of literature review. Literature review locates the research study within the range of existing literature. And it gives you an opportunity to discuss the way in which your study has been influenced by the works of others and to show why you are contrasting with the work that is there or there is coherence between your work and the work that is there. Literature review also tells the reader that you as the researcher, you are familiar with the existing information related to the area under investigation. Remember, you are doing research to search for answers to the research problem. So you will be an expert in your area. So do you know what others have written in that particular area? It is only after you have done literature review that you show your readers that you are familiar with the existing information that is related to your area of study. And this enhances the credibility of your research to the audience of the study. Another purpose is that it helps to identify and justify the approaches that you are adopting. And this includes even the theories that you will anchor your study on. And finally, it helps to build the body of knowledge in the area of investigation. So this is key. And this is what all 
researchers should note that literature review is not a copy and paste. Literature review is you as a researcher adding the voice to what has been already done. And this is by identifying the areas that have been overlooked or are inadequate. And then you show how your study is addressing these gaps. So the issue of voice, your voice as a researcher is very key when we are talking about literature review. So when you read the works of others, then what are you saying? What is your position as a researcher? So that is why this NB is important. That the researcher does not just describe the context of other researchers, but they critically reviews are any inadequacies in the literature that is being reviewed and note that we critique their works objectively we read and we critique it objectively we are identifying any inadequacy in the work that they did what is the scope of literature review one question that every researcher asks is the depth and breadth of your literature review how far how deep should I go as I conduct my literature review? And this is what is referred to as the scope. There is no rule of the thumb on the number of searches to be considered in your literature review. Because expectations on the depth and breadth differ based on the context. However, the following factors need to be borne in mind as you review your literature and as you think about the scope. So we will identify a few factors that you need to consider. Number one is the context. Why are you reviewing the literature? Is it for a PhD thesis? Is it for a master's thesis project or dissertation? Is it for an, a, a paper? Is it for an undergraduate project? So a PhD may expect a hundred sources. Masters may expect between 40 to 50. Journal papers and undergraduate projects may require 20 to 30. Note that these figures are not scientific. They can only act as a guide as you write your paper, your thesis, your dissertation, or your project. Regardless of the number that you are going to review, the researcher should ensure that one, the literature is current. For social science research, the age of the literature should not be more than 10 years unless you are dealing with classical materials. Number two, ensure that the literature is relevant to the problem under investigation. That is why you need to be very clear of your problem. And three, that the study being reviewed is a completely executed and clearly reported that anything that you are going to evaluate as literature has been completely executed and clearly reported so that you'll be able to critically and objectively review it. So note that the context can guide, and many institutions will guide their students on the number of sources that they need them to review. The second one is the problem under investigation. What is the problem? What are the variables of the study and how many variables need to be reviewed? What are the indicators of these variables? How does this become a factor? If one researcher is reviewing three variables and another one is reviewing six variables, definitely the depth and the breadth of the two will differ. If the one who is reviewing six may find that they will require more sources than the one who is reviewing the three. And then we have institutional guidelines. What are the institutional guidelines on how to organize your literature review? Some institutions may give guidelines on the number of pages that they deem adequate. Other institutions may require a historical background of the scope of the study, while others require just a brief background of the scope. So when you're writing your literature review, how does your institution require you to write it? How do you organize the work? So like we keep saying, some institutions you give the guidelines and it is important to follow them. Therefore, institutional guidelines is one factor that you cannot ignore as you write your literature review. 
it is important to note the following as you review your literature note the findings of studies that are closely related to the problems that you are investigating if your study is on sustainability of projects read our literature on sustainability leave out the projects that have been closed leave out the projects about implementation of projects deal with sustainability of projects then also note the design of the study what are the procedures that were employed what are the instruments and the methods of data collection because that is where you are able to identify the inadequacies of the study and by this inadequacy remember we are talking about objective criticism or critical review of the literature the other thing that you need to note is the population from which the sample was drawn including the sampling procedures the variables that were defined and extraneous variables that could have affected the findings so with these five factors what are we saying we are talking about as you consider the scope of your literature review once you have identified the material once you start reviewing your literature it is important to bear in mind what are the findings of the study what is the design why was the population selected and the sample uh, uh, selected what are the variables and uh, were there extraneous variables because that is how you are able to identify the gap for instance you may find a study that you are reviewing only used survey as the design but your study you want to use mixed method so why would you use mixed method so as you reviewed this study has only used survey but the current study will use mixed method because probably it is able to give more comprehensive uh, report and will be able to corroborate the findings of the quantitative research with qualitative research you have already now shown that this study had only used one method but yours is going to use mixed method and with that we have come to the end of this lesson in this lesson we have explained the meaning of literature review we have discussed the purpose of literature review and the factors to consider when you are determining the scope of literature review in our next lesson we are going to discuss the steps that you follow when you are conducting literature review but before then Make sure you visit the researchmethodsclass.com website where you can watch the full research methods course. You can also access other courses on SPSS and M&D consultancy. You are also able to book for consultation and you can also buy the research methods ebook. So see you in our next lesson as we talk about the steps that you follow when you are conducting literature review.